In Activity 3, A Field Trip, students observe and count the number of different kinds of plants and animals living in an area near their school. They review the differences between plants and animals and then compare the total numbers of different organisms present in the area. You will need the following materials from the kit. Activity Sheet 3, Magnifiers, How Many Organisms Chart, and a skein of red yarn. You will also need to provide felt tip markers, pencils, one gallon reclosable plastic bags, and scissors. To prepare for the activity, make a copy of Activity Sheet 3 for each student. Hang the How Many Organisms chart. Choose a location near the schoolyard for a field trip. The location should have three to ten easily differentiated kinds of plants and some evidence of animal life. Obtain permission and make necessary arrangements for a field trip. Remind students and parents to dress appropriately for going outside. Then, cut 16 pieces of yarn, each about one meter long, and tie the magnifiers onto yarn loops that students can wear around their necks. Each team of two will need a magnifier and a plastic bag for collecting leaf specimens from unidentified plants. To begin the activity, explain that an organism is a living, growing thing, as opposed to a rock, and that all plants and animals are organisms. Call students' attention to the plant or animal chart on the classroom wall and ask students, what are the main differences between plants and animals? Help students understand that plants usually have leaves, stems, and roots and cannot move around, while animals usually have heads, bodies, and legs and can move around. Explain that on this field trip, their task is to list and count as many different kinds of plants and animals as they can find in a particular area. Distribute a copy of Activity Sheet 3 and a pencil to each student. Discuss how they will count and identify different organisms. Suggest they make up names for unfamiliar organisms or give them a number and jot down a brief description in the chart on the activity sheet. Tell them they may collect leaf specimens, but not insects or other animals, in their plastic bags and bring them back to class for identification and comparison with other team specimens. Explain to students that if they find fewer than 10 of one kind of plant or animal, they should count them and write the number in the column headed, how many. But if there are more than 10, they can make an estimate. Then divide the class into teams of two and distribute the materials. Next, ask students, what kind of rules should we have for a good field trip? Make a list with students, including listening when others are speaking, staying within the defined area, not acting rough or wild, staying focused on the task, and coming back to the teacher when they hear the signal. Then take the class to the field area and define the boundaries of their search. Allow students time to find, name or describe, count, and record the organisms in their allotted section. Caution students not to put anything into their mouths. Circulate among the students and either provide the proper names of the plants and animals they find, or help them choose appropriate descriptions for unfamiliar plants and animals. Have students bring in sample leaves of unknown plants to compare with leaves other teams collect. Next, return to the classroom and fill in the How Many Organisms chart as a class, listing the plants and animals and the number of each they found. As teams name, describe, or show leaves they found, ask the class, did anyone else find this kind of plant? Add together each team's count to get the total number of each kind of plant. Repeat this process for the other plants and animals students have counted until you have a complete inventory on the chart. Continue the discussion by asking, which were the largest organisms you saw? Which were the smallest? Answers will vary, but trees are likely to be the largest and insects are likely to be the smallest. Finally, compare the numbers of each different kind of organism by asking students, which organism did you see the most of? Which did you see the fewest of? 
If necessary, discuss the difference between size and quantity. To conclude the activity, collect the magnifiers and unused yarn and return them to the kit. Leave the How Many Organisms chart posted in the classroom. For science background, reinforcement activities, curriculum connections, and information about the Delta Science Reader, please consult your DSM Teacher's Guide.